Photography and video have been on a head-to-head -head collision course for a number of years now, with loads of manufacturers trying to solve the problem of how do I get a stills camera and a video camera in one. Enter the X-C10 from Canon. This is aimed at the run-and-gun self-shooting style professional, someone who's out in the field and needs to get their footage and their stills all in one body. We're going to take it around Paris, take a look at the features, I'll give you my comments as I go and a verdict at the end. Weighing just over a thousand grams, the X-C10 is lightweight and compact in design and uses a fixed 10x optical zoom lens with an aperture range of f2.8 to f5.6. Now we would have really have liked to have seen that fixed at a constant aperture, but that would have added a lot more weight to this camera I suspect. In the box, as well as the camera, you'll find an optical loop that Canon has provided instead of giving the X-C10 a dedicated electronic viewfinder. The loop clips onto the back of the camera and I imagine if you're in a rush it would be a little bit fiddly but on bright days it can be useful. For stills, the X-C10 uses a 1 inch 12 megapixel sensor and for video it can shoot in 4K at 305 megabits per second with 422 8-bit colour. For HD it can actually record at 50 megabits per second which are both broadcast quality. The camera records 4K video to CFast 2 cards and records Full HD onto SD. The fact that the X-C10 only shoots JPEGs but can shoot broadcast quality video proves that it is squarely aimed at the roving reporter. But I want to see what else it can do. While I'm walking around the city and switching between stills and video, a couple of things are really starting to stand out. Namely, I'm missing the half press of the shutter button when I'm taking stills. And also, when I'm trying to compose the shots, I'm noticing that the lack of dynamic range that you get from a raw image is really going to show when I'm taking these pictures into post. Although Canon does say the JPEGs have 12 stops of dynamic range, it's hard to tell on the back of the screen whether or not I'm really getting what I'm going for. As you may have noticed, I've actually removed the loop from the back of the camera. Not because it's a bad experience, but because I'm noticing some distortion on the edge of the frame. And also I can't quite tell whether the image is bang in focus or not. So I prefer to use the LCD. I can just punch in with the magnification, I can adjust it manually, and peeking will tell me whether or not I'm in focus. So I want to get a low angle shot of this fountain here. So having the flip out screen is really handy. But another thing that I haven't seen done before, or at least done so well, is the ability to be able to twist the handle like that. It means I can get to a really, really low angle and I've still got the shutter right there. It's a nice touch and definitely makes it a lot easier to get the shot I'm trying to go for right now. As much as I like the ergonomics of this camera, I feel like it's missing a second control dial here, and it could do with a dedicated ISO button. But I do really like its three inch capacitive touchscreen. For punching to functions there, I've got access to all of the controls I need, and I find the screen quite responsive. And this is really handy for changing settings on the fly. But unfortunately, you can't use that when you've got the loop, so you're stuck with this control dial here. When recording in Full HD, the X-C10 can capture high speed and slow motion footage from a quarter speed right up to times 1200. Now this is really good for adding a bit of atmosphere and some creativity to your productions. But when you're recording 4K, only fast motion is available. So that's it from me. We've had a nice long day in Paris and a good old play with the X-C10. And I must say, I have enjoyed my time with this camera, despite the fact that it does have some limitations. But if you're a lone reporter, if you need broadcast quality video with JPEGs and wireless functions that can get those JPEGs off your camera and onto a computer or a server, or even onto your mobile phone, this is a really strong option. We're gonna do a write-up to go with this video, so please check that out on our blog. And thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel for more great videos.